The colonial period had significant importance in American history, but it likely had unpleasant odors. Hygiene practices during this time were influenced by practicality, religious beliefs, and social status. Poor hygiene was considered impolite and connected to the sin of laziness by religious individuals. Today, we will explore the hygiene conditions in colonial America. But before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Interesting Day. Now, hold your breath because we've got some colonial stink coming at you. Captain John Smith, an important figure in Jamestown Colony's history, meticulously documented his experiences in America. These accounts revealed a significant presence of bugs. Smith mentioned bothersome ants, buzzing mosquitoes, irritating flies, and a type of bug known as a cacaroach by the Spaniards. In 1748, George Washington stayed at a cabin infested with bugs in the Shenandoah Valley. He complained about his vermin-filled blanket, which contained lice and fleas. This encounter led him to prefer sleeping outdoors near lit campfires. Another individual, Christian missionary George Henry Los Keel, described a troublesome plague known as living ashes that affected both humans and animals. The Native Americans named them as such because their bites were as painful as burns from red-hot ashes. During colonial times, full body baths, like the ones we commonly take today, were rare and mainly given to infants. However, these baths were not for cleaning purposes, but rather to toughen the babies against diseases. As for adults and children, bathing was not a regular practice. They simply washed themselves, and even that was infrequent. In the morning, most people would only rinse their face and hands using a basin, cloth, and sponge. Those who could afford a bathtub usually had one that was only big enough for a sponge bath, and soap was not typically used. For those who couldn't afford a tub, taking a dip in a nearby lake or stream on a hot day was likely the closest they would come to bathing. In the absence of indoor plumbing during colonial times, outhouses were commonly used, or sometimes just a covered hole near the building. If unable to reach the outhouse, a chamber pot would suffice indoors. These pots needed regular emptying, often done by dumping them out of a window. While not overly challenging, this practice had its drawbacks. Particularly in rural areas where people lived near water sources, the lack of proper sewage control resulted in waste contaminating drinking water and spreading diseases. Sanitation was not a priority in colonial America. Outhouses were often located near water sources, and streets were frequently filled with garbage and animal waste. This lack of cleanliness facilitated the rapid and easy spread of diseases. Dysentery, typhoid fever, and cholera were particularly common, especially during the summer months. Even the American Revolution was not immune to these issues. It is believed that two-thirds of George Washington's troops at Valley Forge in December 1777 died from dysentery, influenza, or typhoid fever. Interestingly, the deplorable conditions may have inadvertently benefited the Continental Army, as a significant number of British troops in the South perished from various fevers. Even among scientists during that era, there was limited understanding of hygiene. While some doctors believed in the preventive benefits of cleanliness, others held onto theories centered around bodily oils. In the absence of a clear scientific explanation, people sought guidance from religion, which readily provided it. For the Puritans, cleanliness had moral implications. They believed that the cleanliness of one's body, clothes, homes, and towns directly correlated with their spiritual well-being. Water was considered purifying and capable of cleansing both the body and the mind. Consequently, those who bathed were seen as less likely to commit sins or experience poverty. However, these beliefs mainly applied to private bathing, as the Puritans deemed public bathing as morally corrupt, potentially leading to sexual impropriety and disease. Cleanliness held great importance for the Puritans, as it aligned with their strict moral code. 
During the 17th century, dental hygiene was not a top priority and toothaches were frequent. Natural remedies like chamomile or figs were commonly used to alleviate pain. In more severe cases, alcohol or opium were used as painkillers. Dental professionals were scarce, so people would often seek assistance from tradesmen like blacksmiths, barbers, or apothecaries to have a tooth pulled. Replacing the extracted tooth was common either by reinserting it into the socket or using dentures and implants made of materials like wood, ivory, and metal. Sometimes, healthy teeth were even purchased from individuals in need. George Washington, known for wearing false teeth, actually had ones made of metal, wire, and animal teeth. It is worth noting that these false teeth caused him pain and distorted the shape of his face, adding to his legendary status. During the colonial era, powdered wigs became a popular fashion trend among the middle and upper classes. These wigs, made from human and animal hair, were worn by both men and women who kept their own hair very short to prevent lice infestations, which were common during that time. However, even with shaved heads, the wigs themselves were still prone to infestations and required regular cleaning by professionals. Ideally, the wigs should have been cleaned weekly, but due to the expensive nature of the process, not everyone was diligent about it. Even in colonial times, wealthy Americans had a penchant for luxurious European goods. Fragrant soaps were among the imported items favored by the affluent colonists. However, for the majority who couldn't afford such luxuries, making their own soap or purchasing it locally was necessary. Lye soap, a type of soap available, was produced through a time-consuming and unpleasant process involving lye, ash, and animal fat. In colonial America, it was not common for women to shave any part of their bodies. Due to moral standards of the time, women were expected to cover up and show minimal skin, making shaving unnecessary. Even facial hair on women was typically not shaved, as it was considered a risky practice and believed that only experienced individuals could prevent bloodshed. Instead, women likely plucked hairs or used depilatory creams for hair removal. While America's founding fathers were knowledgeable about democracy, they lacked expertise in communicating with women. For instance, Thomas Jefferson once told his daughter that a lack of cleanliness and delicacy in women was highly repulsive to their own gender. The topic of female cleanliness was a significant concern, and doctors at the time suggested that bathing could cure illnesses related to the female reproductive system. Interestingly, Prevailing beliefs suggested that women could deliberately emit an offensive odor to deter overly amorous men. Dr. Thomas Ewell of Virginia summed it up succinctly, theorizing that women used smell as a defensive mechanism by making themselves as repugnant as possible. It's safe to assume that he did not have many female clients. George Washington recognized the dangers of disease for the Continental Army and was determined to prevent them. He emphasized the importance of cleanliness to his officers and instructed them to be vigilant against contagions entering the camp. While smallpox was a specific concern, the overall unsanitary conditions in military camps posed additional threats. Washington's men were expected to clean their hands, faces, and shirts regularly, but few soldiers followed this order. Maintaining cleanliness in the camps relied on laborers, known as followers, who traveled with the troops and performed tasks such as cooking and cleaning. These followers, including men, women, and children, played a crucial role in supporting the soldiers throughout the American Revolution. In conclusion, living in colonial times would have had its challenges, particularly regarding hygiene. So what do you think? Would you have liked living in colonial times? Would you stink to join up? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on Interesting Day. See you next time.